Lesson 4.4, the isosceles triangle theorems. Before we get into the isosceles triangle theorems, we're going to define an isosceles triangle. But before I even do that, I just want you to think about isosceles triangle has two congruent sides. If we draw a line down the middle, it forms 90 degree angles. Why would we want to suddenly get into the isosceles triangle? Also the line down the middle breaks that. I am hoping that you can see that this is a natural extension of what we've been working on because this triangle and this triangle are congruent and Y and all that. So that's where we're going today. You can keep that on there. You don't have to erase it. So this is called the vertex. And down in here is called the vertex angle. Each one of the two sides that are congruent, an isosceles triangle has two parts that are congruent. These are called the legs. This is called the base. And these are called the base angles. So now when I talk about an isosceles triangle, we'll all be on the same page. Base, base angles, legs, vertex, and vertex angles. So this is the big isosceles triangle theorem. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. So if I give you these two sides, we also know that these are congruent. I have to prove it though. So if I give you those two sides, what we do is draw a line down the middle. And I haven't really left a lot of room here. We make sure it's a bisector. And this piece is reflexive. So we'll call this M. Since angle BAM is congruent to angle CAM, since side AM is congruent to side AM, since we're given that these two are congruent, we can prove this by side, angle, side, and then we can pull these off by CPCTC. So that's the big thing, and my drawing's a little bit too small, so hopefully you can see what was going on there. That's the big thing in this lesson. Everything else falls off of it. We already got this. An equilateral triangle is also equiangular. Well, if these two are equal down here, then that means the other one has to be blah, 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 blah. As a corollary, it's pretty poor, and we've already done it. So I hate to do it, but I have to say, well, duh. And then we've already done this one, too. An equilateral triangle has 60 degrees. So again, I say, duh. All the angles are going to match up. Corollary 3, the bisector of the vertex angle. I have no idea what's going on. Let's draw a picture. The bisector is perpendicular. This kind of feels like a duh theorem, but it's actually not. Since we have 180 degrees here, since we know that angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent, then we know the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2 equals 90 degrees. That all follows from the other stuff, so that's why it's a corollary, not its own theorem. Now we do something slightly different. If two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite them will be congruent. Didn't we just do this? No, we did not. 
we did if two angles, if two sides are congruent, then the angles are congruent. So what do we call that when we do one one way and the other the other way? I hope you remember that's called a converse. Now we've proved that a isosceles triangle has congruent sides, therefore the angle base angles opposite those sides are congruent. And now we've proved that if the base angles are congruent, then the sides opposite them are opposite them are congruent. You'll use these in proofs, so be prepared. Notice I didn't prove theorem 4-2. We could check. It's very tricky. I've tried it before, and it takes a great deal of time, so I'm going to skip it. And I'm not even going to talk about this. Duh. Just to make sure we're all clear, an equiangular triangle is also equilateral. And again, duh. Although you do need to know that. It's a regular triangle. 60 degree angles, all the sides are equal. All the sides are congruent. That's it. Get cracking on some problems. Good luck.